Hi, everybody. Welcome back to our webinar series on how to achieve better direct marketing results. I'm Noemi Hedrick. This is Vav. Say hi, Vav. Hi. Today, we're going to be covering um, the best way to choose your distribution channels. Um, one of the things you don't need to worry about is taking notes because you'll be able to download our e-guide, uh, Better Results, on at the end of the presentation. So you can just hold back, sit tight, and uh, just enjoy the conversation. Let's talk about distribution channels, Bob. Choosing the right distribution channels. That's right, no, Amy. So we're going to cover a couple different topics on uh, choosing uh, channels for distribution of your direct marketing campaign. We're going to cover a little bit about the audience and the importance of how the audience dictates the channel choices. Right. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about selecting the right channels. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the value of using multiple channels uh, to really get the full impact of your direct marketing efforts. So That's right. It can be overwhelming to try to figure out which way to communicate with your audience the best. And uh, the best way is to know or understand how your audience likes to be communicated with. Right. So depending on what you're trying to do, whether uh, you have a very targeted audience or maybe a less defined audience, um, those are all things that you need to understand in order to make the right channel choices. So targeted audiences are going to allow you to really get your message in front of the people that you want. Your list should support an understanding mm -hmm. of, of who those people are. And then right. your ability to use direct mail or email or even, you know, social media is going to be much more effective. Um, right. If your audience is broader and less defined, your channel choices are going to be a little bit more narrow. Um, you, you know, there's more than likely that, you know, direct mail is going to work for you, whether you're acquiring a list or you're doing EDDM. But even in the digital world, you can target an unknown audience based on the attributes that are defined within that social media or search criteria. Um, so there's a lot of choices that you have, uh, but understanding whether your audience is really, again, more definely targeted or broad is going to have a big impact on the choices you make uh, for your channel distribution. That's right. And again, as Bob mentioned, um, just because sometimes you are not able to purchase the list doesn't mean that you can't get access to databases. Like right. social media is a good example. You may not be able to acquire that list, but you can definitely utilize some of the criteria that they have um, in segmentations to try to target the audience that you're trying to reach. All right. So understanding the demographics of your audience is also, you know, super important. Uh, younger people have a much more uh, uh, closer affiliation to uh, using digital, right? They're they're mm -hmm. just more comfortable with digital. They'll respond to digital. An older audience is is probably going to be a little bit more comfortable with traditional. Um, but understanding those demographics is is super important. And again, you just can't make assumptions. You know, you just you, we're going to talk a lot about you know using both traditional and uh, and digital methods. Mm -hmm. uh, but having a good understanding of of who the the audience is, and really what we're talking about is you know what we know about them and their willingness to want to respond is going to have an impact on you know again whether you're going to use more traditional or digital. Mm -hmm. Uh, channels for getting your your campaign out. Absolutely. Considering the audience is, I guess, one step, but you should also um, consider kind of the the cultural cue, right? Like mm -hmm. right now in the situation we're in, digital has been kind of the go-to for most people um, just because of the pandemic, et cetera. So consider all aspects of what's going on and understanding your audience, um, people in general, and where right. they are in their life and then um, use that to your advantage. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, uh, building a database versus buying a database. Again, we kind of talked about this a little bit with targeted or broad, you know, building your database is obviously your preferred method, right? right? You have more information about the audience. You probably have more than just an address, but you have an email or some other information about them. Um, so you have a broader sense of choices that you can use in order to get your message out. Where, where you're buying data, you're probably a little bit more limited. Um, 
you know, to using more traditional methods uh, than you would if you were building your own list. And no matter which way you go, work with the data that you have. Just, you know, be comfortable that you, this is what you have, make the best choices possible, and then, you know, keep it moving. Right. Um, there's actually even ways that you can utilize the database that you have. Um, you can upload that to some social media platforms and that will help you kind of narrow down the audience that you should be targeting based mm -hmm. on data that you have. So there's certain things that you can do to try to work with what you have, but then also reach something that you're looking for. Right. Great points. Mm -hmm. So again, selecting the right channel, you know, Naomi said this early on, there's so many choices. I mean, it's just really, it's just really overwhelming sometimes, you know, you have, you know, email, you have social media, you have paid ads, you have direct mail, advertising, PR, you know, it's really hard sometimes to really kind of hone in on what works best. So um, again, you know, over time, you'll learn what the best choices are. Um, you know, use the use the options that are available to you and then add new ones in as you go. One of the right. things to consider in selecting the right channel is what is your call to action, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, in digital world, you know, clicking on a button or filling out a form is really easy. Right. Uh, but if you're using traditional methods like direct mail, you've got to get them to respond. And, you know, they're willing to, you know, uh, fill out some information or submit a response but a lot of times the best way to get them uh to respond to you is to get them to move from traditional mm -hmm. to digital so using qr codes or vanity urls uh to make it easy for them to go well that's interesting i'm going to you know scan that in and respond i'm gonna you know type in that url and respond you really have to think about in that channel traditional channel what the call to action is and how you can make it as easy as possible for those people to respond. Right, I think one of the things to consider is just really, again, it goes back to your audience, to your customer base, right? It's It should be, your efforts really should be customer centric. They should be based on how can you make that much easier mm -hmm. for your customer to do what you're hoping them to do? Right. Um, again, that's what's gonna lead to better results is just think about what are the steps that you can take to just get that call to action, um, get the results, get that click? So mm -hmm. if it's a direct mail, even one of the things that is coming back now is our QR codes, right? Just right. because of where we are, um, people just they're used to it now and they're using it. So that experience would just make that much easier for them to donate or go fill out a form, download a PDF, whatever that may be. So consider your audience and how you can make it easier for them. And really that's going to pay off in the long run. Mm -hmm. And each channel has different value. You know, from our experience, we know that printing is going to have a little bit more, you know, life with the client. They're going to keep it around. They're going to consider it a little longer. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll keep it in their to-do pile or put it into their checkbook. Um, you can tell a bigger story with with traditional methods like print than you can with others. Um, so printing is going to stay around a little longer. They're going to hang on to it. You know, emails they might consider for a day or so and social media maybe for an hour or so. There's nothing wrong with those different channels. It's really how you choreograph them all together to kind of get the kind of response that you're looking for. And if you don't really have a existing audience that you are or that you know, um, don't be overwhelmed by that. Um, there's no right or wrong. Um, as long as you are making an effort to try to reach your audience, you can learn so much from that and then you can always do better the next time. So mm -hmm. there's really no pressure. Um, you should kind of take that out of the equation and then just try different ways to communicate with your audience and see what gives you the best results too. Right. So there's a lot of value in choosing multiple channels, right? Mm -hmm. Again, this blend of digital and traditional. Right. Um, again, you know, you're trying to get multiple touch points. That's the key to increasing the impact of your direct marketing campaign. Right. A lot of times we see these campaigns fail because they're one attempt, right? It's one direct mail piece or one email. Um, really, you know, to get somebody's attention today, you need to think in terms of eight to 10 touches one print touch, multiple email touches. They see it socially. They see it in, in paid ads. 
all those things are going to have an impact and those multiple touches and how you choreograph that are really going to have a huge impact on the success of your campaign. Absolutely. A lot of times our clients just, you know, they can't afford to do multiple channels mm -hmm. that they really, um, you know, are comfortable with one channel and that's what their budget allows them to do. And there's nothing wrong with that. Again, if you're just going to do print, dominate print, do it really well. If you're going to mm -hmm. use social media, again, just dominate that channel and use that channel as effectively as you can um, and to build your campaign strategy. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times be contrarian. You know, the digital world today is really saturated. People are getting incredible yeah. amounts of email, incredible amounts of digital ads. You know, printing is really standing out and having a huge impact on the success of direct marketing campaigns because to some degree it is a contrarian kind of approach to get your information in front of people. Right, you just want to be able to stand out, right? And and be noticed. So, right. um, and again, Bob, great point about the, the multi touch points because that's really what's gonna make the difference. Yeah. Um, choosing the right channel um, will go a long way with your audience, but just being consistent with that communication um, is really going to make the difference. It's the key, right? Right. Well, let's meet Joel. Joel is like you and I. We've been there before. Um, we're comfortable with one channel. In his case, is digital. Um, the audience is expanding. He's kind of stuck a little bit. Um, we're going to help Joel achieve a success through the methodology that we apply of good, better, and best. So let's take Joel down that path, Bob. To success, right. So yeah. again, we've talked about this in the past and we love this because it can kind of galvanizes for everybody because yeah. everybody's in a different position. They're either doing really well or, or they're, they want to do better. But for Joel in this good strategy, he's probably focusing more on one channel. Right. You know, he's doing it consistently and, and probably feels pretty good about it. He's maybe experimenting with messaging or A-B testing subject lines or doing some some things to help him, you know, try to pulse uh, his response. And he's probably using a single call to action. So good strategy, he's but doing okay. for him to get better, yeah, we really got to kind of take him to another level. So right. um, to get better, you know, Joel would need to consider combining multiple channels, using social media email and print you know and again finding that sweet spot and how to choreograph that together to kind of again move his results further and further um to where he wants them to be mm -hmm. um uses the same message mm -hmm. still across all channels right he, again mm -hmm. you know his messaging and print or email and social media is all the same you know, again, printing is allowed to be a little bit more elaborate in what he's explaining about his products and services or about his cause if he's in direct mail. Uh, email is going to be a little bit more abbreviated. And again, social media is really truncated and, and really just trying to remind people again and move them you know, to, to a bigger, uh, bigger story. Yeah, Bob, and I think that's an important point to kind of go over, use the same message across all channels. So that's what really creates a campaign, right? You're going to have different communications throughout your relationship with the audience. Right. But if you have a specific message, a specific goal that you're trying to achieve, um, if it's a donation or if it's a product you're trying to sell, just create that campaign. And that campaign then can be distributed in different channels, social media, email, prints, but stick to that branding message that just that consists that visual consistency so that way they can kind of without realizing know um that you're communicating with them about one specific yeah what the story is all about yeah right so, so and then you can have multiple campaigns throughout your relationship with them but just stick to them and then be clear about you know what they are and what then you're trying uh, to communicate. move on to the next one right yep so again, you know, in this stage too, Joel's probably aligning his call to actions to the channel, right? So in digital, it's, you know, push a button, view a video, fill out a form. Uh, but in traditional, it's, you could be make a call, again, you know, scan a QR code, create a, you know, vanity URL. You know, he, he really understands that the, uh, the, 
the channel is going to require just a little bit different call to action to get the results that he wants. Right. Give the hierarchy uh, to the call to action based on the channel. Right. right. So maybe put a phone number um, first if it's a print piece or a QR code that's more visible and takes more real estate on the direct mail piece. Whatever that may be, just think of what you're using to communicate with them and then what the call to action should be for that specific channel. All right. So again, for Joel to really get into the best level now, again, he's personalizing messages. Again, in our second seminar, we, we talked about, right. you know, um, the database and can the database support segmentation or personalization? Mm -hmm. And if you can do that really now through email, through print, whatever you're using, you're kind of starting to personalize that messaging um, so that you can kind of make that connection with the right. person in a different way than if you're just using generic messaging. And that's an important piece of information too, just because the personalization, the point of personalization is the connection, right, Bob, is for you to kind of establish that relationship with them. So mm -hmm. definitely a lot of value in, in, in doing that. Mm -hmm. So again, you know, creating multiple calls to action and proving out the channel performance. Again, Joel's done several campaigns, so he knows what's mm -hmm. working or he should know what's working and what's not working, and he's proving out. So now he's starting to you know, uh, move his, his uh, strategy around a little bit because a, one channel has outperformed another, or again, a message has outperformed another. And he has the data to support that, and he's proving that out. Uh, so again, the messaging and, and the channel choices are all things that you know, he, you should be tracking in mm -hmm. order to really demonstrate where you're getting your, your responses from. Absolutely. We've been talking about that uh, throughout the series. It just, you, you want to make sure that you're tracking and analyzing every aspect and every step of it. That is really the only way you're going to be able to, to grow. Um, setting that benchmark and then just trying to do better from that, from there from is the key. Point, yeah. So really to moving from good to best, again, use multiple channels as much as you can or mm -hmm. absolutely dominate one. Uh, create call to the actions that are appropriate for the channel. And again, to know Amy's point, test and measure, test and measure. You really, you know, the more information you have about what's happening in your campaign or after campaign just helps you make a better decision about where you're going to go after that. Right. From the time when you set the strategy and, and you were planning your campaign, just being intentional until the very end of it and getting those results is what's going to give you uh, the ability to do better next time. Right. So just full circle. Yep. Some bonus tips. Um, a video can really be integrated in direct mail now. Um, talking about keeping a campaign consistent, if you're going to use a little video um, on digital, you can also do that with direct mail. There's so many different ways to tie your campaign together. Um, this is just one of them. Um, try to think about not minimizing your results by reaching out too far of an audience or too big of an audience. So um, sometimes being very specific and intentional again about your audience um, is going to lead to higher results because you're not going to be a I guess suppose wasting effort with just putting communication out there for um, people that it doesn't apply. So just make sure that you you're really specific about your audience, and then your results will, will reflect that. Yeah. And then uh, track where the response is coming from. Again, that is key for you to be able to establish better relationship with your audience and uh, improve your chances for better results. Yep. Well, this is it, Bob. Um, as I mentioned before, um, our audience now can download the e-guides that we have available for you. Just go to betterresultsforyou.com. And uh, this is going to give you information on previous webinars that we had, as well as this one and future ones. That's the whole package. The whole package. So we want to thank you for spending some time with us today. Again, Noemi and I have been having a lot of fun. Yes. Uh, we have one more webinar to kind of you know close out the series, and that's going to be on you know key performance indicators. You know how to measure and analyze the performance of your campaign. So that's going to be coming out November eighteenth. So look for us then. Hope to see you then. Bye. Bye.